So, if you're watching video, I'm gonna, I want us to recap a little last week, and we might be doing things differently than what you're used to. That's okay, and it, we won't ever uh, necessarily, I uh, try not to get in a rut. So, just because I do something this week doesn't mean necessarily I'll do it next week. Now, remember, I've been teaching uh, lots of ages, teenagers specifically for a long time, and it's easy to lose them. And uh, so, I try not to get in any kind of rut. So, but for the next few weeks, we will go through uh, Jesus and looking at him and, uh, again, trying to put ourselves in the crowd, uh, in the, the acts that he did, and just looking at the person of Jesus and who he was. And we're going to revisit the widow of Nain from last week. I want to do a little refreshing and recap for those who weren't here and refresh you guys for those of you who maybe been asleep since last Wednesday, Okay. All right, it's been a long week, right? So uh, we'll, we'll refresh and recap that. If you're watching the video, I'm going to have someone else read. Sometimes I'll read. But if you're watching video at this point, and if, if you don't know where, if you don't, can't hear the people responding, I will try to for the sake, and I'm talking to the people that are watching this via video for people that are home watching this because of COVID. Um, I will try to, when I ask questions, because we've been interacting last week, we're going to interact again tonight. I'll try to rephrase what's said so you guys can hear it on video. And I'm going to ask someone to read our text tonight. Uh, And um, that will be Luke 7, 11 through, let me get my Bible. Ed, what did I tell you that was? 7, 11 through what? 17. Okay. Who would like to read that? So if you're at home and you can't hear the text read, grab your Bible and you can read that for yourself. Luke 7, 11 through 17. Someone, see, I'm going to be talking a lot tonight. That's why I like you guys to talk a little bit. So, who would like to read that? You got it. All right, good deal. So, um, let's do some refreshing and reviewing from last week. What were some big ideas we pulled out last week? And then we're going to get to the end of this passage and wrap it up. Uh, some big ideas we pulled from last week. I do want to rephrase something I, uh, and, and sometimes. You trust your brain to recall something from the Bible. And I, I want to correct, make a correction of something I said last week. I said Jesus told the man to get up and walk when the disciples, and we're going to visit this one in a few weeks too. The disciples were talking about a guy like he was not there. And they were basically objectifying him, talking over him. What sin did he commit? It was the guy that was blind. He wasn't uh, lame. So we'll get to that one. But that's the one where Jesus said it wasn't a sin that he did, and he talked to the guy, and we'll, we'll get there. But it wasn't a guy that was lame, so I crossed miracles. Forgive me for that. I just want to make sure when I'm, that's why you check your preachers, make sure they're telling the truth. <laughs> that's right. All right, so what were some of the big ideas from last week? Yes. Yes. Exactly. The big miracle stories, we tend to focus on the miracles. And we talked last week about the the point of what Jesus was doing. He keeps bringing it back to the woman in need. What did we learn about the woman? What's her state of being right now? Compassion. Exactly. Compassion for the woman. She had a need. Uh, we Who was not here last Wednesday? Anybody? Just a few of you. Uh, she had a need. She was in her society. Uh, we established that she was at the bottom of the barrel. Um, already, women weren't respected much. Their, their uh, level was based upon their husband, upon their son. She was a widow who had lost her son. So um, she was already um, in a place of... Uh, I, when I was reading this, a commentary compared her to Naomi when Naomi said, call me bitter. Um, a place, kind of a, what they call it back in the day in ancient uh, Jewish culture, called it a living death. It was the equivalent. Um, that it was just a bad, bad situation. She had, the equivalent, how could we put that in mod- modern equivalency? Um, think of losing your pension or your, your retirement plan, uh, your health care, just everything gone and so jesus as we'll see when the miracles and in the miracles he performs oftentimes was meeting people that society overlooked the underdogs the the least of these right what else did we uh notice last week anything else 
two crowds, yeah. Um, and Jesus, interesting enough, we say, it says, uh, uh, the word in there alludes to a great couple thousand, as it said. Um, I think it was multitude or something like that. Um, and meeting a crowd of about a few hundred, if it was the population of Nain. And Jesus is the center of that. Eyes are on him. Uh, we talked about it being written from the point of reportage where details are there. And they're, they're writing from the point of view these people are eyewitnesses seeing what's happen, happening enough to, to focus on these few players in the midst of this big, big group of people. Uh, Jesus at the middle, right? Jesus and the woman at the middle. So even going into details of his look, and that's where we're going to pick up tonight, uh, what they were seeing. So putting us in the crowd with Jesus, let's think about this for a moment. It says his heart went out to her. So it says it, it, that uh, the answer to this question is uh, so obvious that it's hard to answer. How were we sitting here 2,000 years later knowing that Jesus felt compassion? The Bible says that he felt compassion. So, in looking at this, they, they're seeing, and where I'm getting at this is they're say, saying that they saw compassion on Jesus. The eyewitnesses saw compassion all over Jesus. It must have been noticeable because it's the it's most frequent mentioned emotion. It is the most frequently mentioned emotion of Jesus in the Gospels. You catch that? So, Think about, we talked a little bit about this. I want to get into it a little bit more tonight. Um, what does ca compassion look like physically? Since they mentioned that, that's a big deal that they mentioned that emotion so much with Jesus. What would compassion look like physically? So let's start with the opposite of compassion, anger. <laughs> what do we see so we can kind of compare and contrast the two? What do we see when we see and recognize that someone is angry physically? Furrowed brow, okay? Clenched jaw. jaw. How much of communication is body language? 75%. 75 it's up there. I was going to say 80 or something like that. Yeah. So you can see things, right? You can see emotion. You don't realize it half the time, but you see more than you hear. Uh, what else? Anger. Red in, red in the face, okay. What about eyes? Can you see it in the eyes? It's amazing. I, I see Silas keeps a passy in his mouth, right? My baby. You can see his eyes smile because he can't see his mouth. Smile. Loud, yeah. Raised voice. Uh, rigid, stance. rigid stance. You can see it in posture, right? So what about compassion? Take it to compassion. What would we see if we see someone having compassion? What would be the difference? Empathy? How do we see empathy, Ed? Okay. Okay. What, what are we seeing physically in Jesus, though, to recognize him? You, maybe he hugged, right? What Relaxed. Let's go the opposite of anger. Body relaxed. What about his focus? All right, maybe arms open, yeah. Um, what about tone of voice? Anger, you're yelling, soft, calm, comforting. What about movement? How would the movement properly be? Slow. Uh, maybe towards a person, right? Um, tender type touches. So, and, and he mentioned, Ed mentioned empathy. Inside the other person, uh, feeling her pain, moving towards her to care for her. His heart went out to her, moved with compassion. That's, that's an interesting phrase there, that his heart went out to her. So thinking about that, I just want you to see how Jesus as our leader, I mean, we're talking about uh, the God-man who never, who, who was the, the archetype for how we should live, how he carried himself. And feeling compassion, and in in this amidst uh, amidst this giant crowd, he's gentle, he's focused, he's calm, he's collected. Um, 
and all the focus is on him. I mean, think, think of the power there. That was alluded to last week. Thousands of people, this quiet moment is the center of everything. Okay. Yes. Yeah. He saw her. Pastor Ken's saying he saw, and that is exactly where we're heading uh, tonight. Uh, what was the reaction to the crowd? Uh, what are they thinking when they saw Jesus do this miracle? So we got him. He goes up. Uh, he raises the boy, and he brings the boy back to mother. We talked about this last week. So. It's, he's meeting the need of mom. He's meeting the need of this woman. What's the reaction from the crowd? What's that? Fear. Fear. Yeah. Probably quite a bit of awe. Quite a bit of awe. And the history of Nain is interesting. That they had, um, uh, this is where, if you're familiar with the book Maccabees, um, and it's, it's not a book we look at as uh, canical, but, it's like with uh, uh, kind of the equivalent of Josephus' um, writings about the Bible, historian. They were very aware of looking for Messiah and uh, looking for a prophet. And uh, he definitely moved and, and rustled feathers that day. Okay? Um, after the miracle, the crowd is probably thinking about the miracle. Jesus and God. Uh, what is Jesus thinking about? I want you to see, see what's happening here. Jesus' eyes are on the woman. Jesus gives the son back to his mother that he raises from the dead. Why does he give the son back to his mother? Because she is more important than the miracle. And I want you to compare this to a modern day pastor. Don't you think maybe, you know, I'm not saying Pastor Ken or us or anything, or just, just someone to do a great miracle like this. Talking about book signings, right? He's their rock star. Um, he didn't preach a sermon. Um, his concern for her is all about her. It's genuine. He didn't use it for personal gain, right? It is about her. Um, it seems kind of unnecessary, right, that, that he gives the, the son back to the woman. But do you see the picture there? Think about that. I see the heart of Jesus being about people. And by not saying anything, anything, Jesus does effectively preach a sermon. Showing that he hasn't come with magical powers. It's not about that, uh, but about the need, about people, about the, their pain, about their hurt. Uh, and that, that is power. Uh, as we think about uh, him and, and I think about sometimes our motivations and um, even in the name of church that we have to be careful and this really speaks to me about seeing people as people. Jesus cared about the person and he didn't objectify him. He didn't see them as, as numbers. He didn't see them only as a possible church member. He loved the person. He didn't see it to give him uh, props or make him any more famous. It wasn't about that. It was about the person. Um, think about that being done today. Think of the difference. Think of the humility we're seeing in Christ uh, doing this. And the subtle nature that he did this. Um, just boom. Big. All right. So based on what you've seen in this description of how Jesus loved the woman, what would you say are the steps of love? The first, the second, the third. So, and we kind of got into this a little bit last week. So it says at the bottom, this is going to be the base, the steps of love. So in this passage, what did we say last week that he saw? So we're going to go looking here. And what we're doing is setting up the foundation for the weeks ahead. You're going to see this pattern happening frequently. It says he saw, 
He looked, he saw, and then it says he felt compassion. Let me see the word we're going to put here. Compassion. He saw, he looked, he felt compassion, and then what? It's the last step. He acted. All right, he helped. He helped. Looking, compassion, helping. When we read this passage, what stood out the most? We said this, the dead son being raised. Now that you've examined the passage, what's the most noticeable? Jesus' love, yeah. His, his compassion. Now, this is the heart check of all this. How are we different? This is going to take some honesty. <laughs> How are we different than Jesus in these type of situations? We can talk as human beings. We can talk honestly about ourselves. Mm, that's a big one. He said we look the other way. Uh, just getting the eyes of Jesus is huge. Um, anytime we step into, and this is a greater, a whole other sermon in itself, love costs, right? Even when we take time walking down, I used to tell our students at school, when you say, some, how are you doing? We blow that one out a lot, right? How are you doing? And they're fine, fine, usually. If someone gets you with one of those not too good, you're like, oh, so do I go into this conversation because I've got to give some time. I might have to give some listen in. It might bring me from happy mood down to sad mood. You see, you're entering into their hurt when you engage. Right? And looking is what gets you there. Right? <laughs> you made eye contact. Here we go. And that's what happens when we step into relationships. C.S. Lewis has one of my favorite quotes. And I'm not even going to try it because I will blow it. But he just talks about to even love a puppy, you're going to get hurt because eventually that puppy dies. You know, to love someone, to engage people, it, it, uh, it costs. It's an exchange that happens. And a lot of times we're exchanging our good, our happy emotions, our, I'm having a good day to step into their pain. Right? You know, I think a lot of times in TV, Yeah. Randy just said, for those of you watching by camera, that he said a lot of times we feel it, but the hardest is, is acting. Like, what do we do? And, and so, looking's the first step, right? Having the eyes to see um, and, and having the knowing that that's going to lead. I think what Randy's saying, notice, knowing that if you look sometimes, you might get into here and it might lead to this. <laughs> we realize that. Do I have time for this? You know, we're busy. We have our schedule. We have, I got this on my calendar today. Uh, this might cost some time. Uh, ultimately, we're going to get to the fact that, and we'll see this over and over, the gospel connection here is Jesus, the exchange he makes with us, not fair, Right? The great exchange he makes for us uh, with the gospel is he gives us life. What does he take in exchange for that? Death. Not a fair trade, right? He steps into our pain. He steps into our hurt to give us life. Uh, back to that C.S. Lewis quote, he said, you love anything, you'll get hurt. But he said the only pla safe place um, outside of relationships, basically, uh, where you can stick to yourself, he says, he says it's hell. <laughs> to, to not engage people, to be cocooned in self is, is essentially isolation is hell. But that's not what God made us for. Um, so I'll pull that quote up for you one day. So, some other differences from us. Looking, he said, that, that's, that's a challenge. What else? So reflect, what the question I asked specifically is how are we different from Jesus? So maybe we don't want to take time to look because we're in, caught up in the schedule. Sometimes 
that's a good point. She said we don't have Jesus' insight. So sometimes we don't know, like, ah, is this person going to give me the, the big story again? You know, we're not sure if it's valid. Um, and that, that's a hard one, especially when we're dealing with people, like if you ever dealt with homeless people a lot. As a pastor, especially in the Keys, we had them frequently coming in. And it's one of those things that it's, um, it's a different scenario in, in general. And it's, it's just uh, you, you want to use your filter. But God also honors um, the act, the giving, the love, no matter what it is. I really believe that. So, so, and, and exactly. Yeah. We're called to, to love, not to necessarily see the fruit of our labor, Right? So we're just called to love it. Randy, you had your hand up again. Yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, so sometimes it's hard to know yeah. what to do. Yeah. Yeah. It's, a, it's even, it's gotten more complicated, it seems, with the, um, the uh, what's the word of the ones that make it, take a living out of it? And what's that? Yeah. yeah. Um, that panhandlers and so forth. Um, yeah, I try to I try to go just my personal. I try to go for those that aren't asking usually, and and not always. It just depends. to try to get the Holy Spirit to nudge you in the right direction in those times. Um, I, I quit giving cash out a long time ago. I usually get them something or something like that. But um, just uh, that's a whole other bird in itself. Talking about homeless specifically, we can take this and apply this to all types of situations. Um, in in, I think the the lesson to learn here is too. Not just the big things. I think it's almost easier to miss the little things in our lives. The people that just look down, you know, having a bad day. And sometimes I, I remember being a teacher and, and seeing that student and, and so busy. Sometimes we get caught up in even doing the Lord's work. <laughs> We've got our, our class to get to, lesson to prepare. I just don't know if I have time to enter into that space, you know. Um, and it happens even as a pastor. People are the priority. Hey, I've got a sermon to prepare. This person needs one-on-one -on -one care, right? And God's called us to enter into that space. And we have to do war with ourselves sometimes because our schedules will become God, right? It happens. They become a priority. And uh, we've got to remember that people matter. If anything we're going to learn over the next few weeks, you're going to see this. Jesus put people at the top, people were priority. People mattered above schedules, above clout, above anything. Uh, the people, that, that, that people mattered. Uh, let me read this little uh, quote for, for you. In this story, we're watching how God loves us. This one incident reflects the whole pattern of Jesus' life. He looks at us, he feels compassion, and acts by giving his life on the cross for us. That's the gospel. Sometimes Jesus' death on the cross seems abstract, but by connecting it with his life, we flesh out the gospel and see how concrete God's love is for us. Through Jesus, God looks at us, feels our pain, and acts for us. We are not alone. This is what he did for us. And we're doing the same thing. Now go and do, this. do likewise. Love those without hope. Love those that are hurting. Love those in pain. And he continues to fill our tank. This is what we've been talking about on Sunday morning. So we can go and do that. And he fills our tank. So we have that to give. Because what do we have to give sometimes? Not a lot, right? But he gives to us so we can reciprocate that and give that to others. Pastor Ken. There's a certain amount of cost, but even danger. Yeah. Sometimes they were the only nubs of fingers, mm. or maybe only uh, the palm of the hand or less, and, and, uh, and a little bit of ooh 
Yeah, it costs, it costs. Us to have compassion yeah. on others if we're going to act. Yes, yeah. And, and we'll get to that, um, and, and you'll see that in story through story. And you see that in your own life. He, he, Pastor Ken said, for those of you watching at home, it costs us to give to others. And again, that exchange um, that you're given, at least you're given time by entering into somebody's space that's hurting, um, sometimes it ends up being monetary, right? Um, sometimes it ends up being... Uh, emotional um, lots of things when we enter into people's pain and if we keep relationships we're going to have that one thing i i told the committee when i came here i said to come into a church you're coming into a lot more relationships and that's a lot more potential pain hurt you know you know people the more people you know the more people you're connected with the more ups and downs you're going to have in life and that's what god calls us to we we've got to live connected we're not made to be alone and, and i'll wrap up with this this is great i was talking to man about this that we're seeing god at, the, at a heart being relational jesus modeled this for us he was relational um, god did not create us because he was lonely uh, god in the trinity himself and this will definitely come out on sunday morning because this is something i, I learned and, and we need to learn we need to know God in himself is relational. That's one thing unique. Another unique thing about Christianity. God in himself, the Trinity, it's one of those things, you know, it's bigger than we can take in. In himself, you see the Father glorifying Son, Holy Spirit glorifying Son, Father, all, all this happening, this reciprocating thing happening. We are invited, when he made us, we were invited into that fellowship. Kind of like invited into the dance. He didn't need us. He wanted us. He made us and invites us to join in to that fellowship. This is why, jumping ahead to Sunday morning, we we're going to talk about the Ten Commandments. They are vertical, love God, honor the Sabbath, um, keep it holy, um, all about God. And then last six are all about people. Catch that. You'll catch that as you read them. First four are about God. Last six are about people, which goes to what did Jesus say? Love God with all your heart, soul, and mind. That's what matters. Love your neighbor as yourself. Vertical, horizontal. It's pretty cool, huh? Jesus, the Trinity God that is unique to Christianity, that in himself there's relationship. Without us, in God himself is relationship. I'm not talking, don't get creeped out here. I'm not talking about three different people. Just the Trinity itself. Uh, relationship and we are invited into that then we go out in relationship connect with others love others as he loves us good stuff right that's uh, that's what god has invited us into that's the invitation to join into that fellowship with him and to lead other people into that fellowship with him any other highlights things in your mind thoughts on this passage ed No, go ahead. Every one of the people that he restored to life died. And the great martyrs died with them. There was going to come a time when we will be resurrected in the Lord. Mm. And that's such a great contrast to this one. That we will forever be elated resurrection, not restored to life. Mm hmm. That's right, yeah. Interesting little note to that, Ed. Um, this same area, I don't know if it's the same exact city. I read it in the commentary. should have dug into it because I didn't know Ed was going to say this. This was the area where Elijah was, was, uh, uh, was raised too. So um, where, what am I trying to say happened there? What's that? Yeah, yeah. Um, so they were looking for this. this th they had this sense of awe that had happened in the past. Um, I need to look that up and make sure I'm saying what it, but it was the same area that he was saying these people were probably very well aware of that and to see a boy raised from the dead was, um, I guess when he went up in his chariots of fire. Um, and, and so this was that place where that, in that same area, 
again, don't quote me on that. I'm going to look it up and, and see. But something big had happened specific to that. I think that's what it was. But anyway, anybody else? So let's do this going out. Um, think about uh, how are we looking? Look. Uh, think about feeling compassion and acting. And this happens within us as we look, we feel compassion, and then we act on this. And what can we do? And some of us are already in this motion, but I think last week I said, let's just start looking uh, for things. Um, but God, I promise if we start doing this, if we start setting our eyes on looking, saying, God, help me, help me to do this. Help me to see more clearly. Help me to try to, and, and we're all in different places of life. It depends on the crowd you're talking to. Some of us have more time to see. Uh, we're, we're intentional about looking. Uh, some of us, uh, it's those that are still working jobs and have families and, you know, you're just minute to minute focused on the calendar. What's at five? What's at six? What, you know, it's a little harder sometimes. But sometimes it's right under our nose, right? Right? Uh, oftentimes the people we tend to treat, well, this is a whole other sermon too, the, the people we treat the worst are often the people we love the most, right? So we can start looking right at home. Don't elbow anybody, okay? <laughs> so uh, we can start looking right, right at our house and right at our household and the people we're with every day. It's there. If we start just praying, start right here, step one, okay? If we're going to continue to look at this pattern in Jesus, start right here. And that will lead to that. Uh, it will lead us to compassion. It will lead us to help. But start praying that God show me, help me to look. And if you start being intentional about it, you're going to see things you've been missing all along. Uh, it's amazing. Because uh, someone led me through this study and I started to recognize these things. And these are these neat patterns in Scripture. You re they've, they've been there all along. It's like, I never noticed that. And if you start intentionally looking, it's praying that God give me eyes to see. You'll see opportunities all around you and needs to be met. And the Holy Spirit will uh, just put this habit on your heart. So start right there. Uh, what can we see? How can we see? Give us, give us, Jesus, give us your eyes to see uh, the needs that are around us that we might have compassion on them and help them. And we'll talk more in the weeks ahead. All right? Well, let me pray with you. God, we thank you so much for your love for us. Thank you for your compassion for us. We are to be your hands and feet, the reflections of you. Thank you for loving us well. Help us to look. Help us to see. Help us to start right in our own family. Um, God, how can we show uh, the gospel in our lives uh, to those around us? God, we know there, there's opportunity after opportunity. Sometimes we're just caught up in our schedule so much or in our own lives that we're not opening our eyes. We're not wanting to make eye contact. We're not wanting to move towards people. So God, I pray you'd help us to do that. Help us to um, make those, those exchanges because you made that, that great exchange for us. Um, God, thank you for this church. I pray for what's ahead. I, I pray for those who are here right now. I pray for those under my voice right now, God, that you would um, just set us on fire and, and may the growth at Northside start with us just looking. So help us look as we go out. Uh, thank you for this time together. Thank you for loving us and giving us togetherness in your name. Amen.